I went to see a therapist because of a bad breakup. Turns out she specialized in childhood sexual abuse. After several months of therapy, she asked me if I would start talking with her about my abuse. I told her on one condition. I was never going to tell a soul what happened to me and she had to agree to never try and convince me to. I was taking this secret to the grave and that was non-negotiable. Want to know how I went from that statement told with such conviction to standing right here in front of you today? Watch this video to find out. Hi, Crystal Wood here. I am the co-founder of You Grow Girl and I am also a child sexual abuse survivor. Are you wondering if it's time for you to disclose your own abuse? Are you fearful about what might come next after you tell? Or maybe you've already told and now you're struggling with the aftermath. In this video, I am going to share with you the one thing that I learned through therapy that changed my mind about talking about my own abuse. I'm telling this story not because I want to convince you to say me too, not at all. I'm sharing with you this story in the hopes that it might shed light on a topic you might not even realize you're struggling with because it's trapped in your subconscious mind. Before I dive in though, I do just want to give a shout out to everybody who has been taking the time to watch these videos. Your support and amazing feedback and comments really is what keeps me going. I did have to stay, take a step away after the last video and take a little time for myself to decompress. Through my own personal healing journey, I have learned to recognize when I am close to burnout and I was creeping dangerously close. I took a much needed rest from the heavy emotional stuff that these videos stir up and it was just what I needed to gather fresh thoughts and ideas. So thank you for your patience in waiting for this video to be released. I really hope it's worth the wait. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified when new, when new videos do come out. So without further ado, let's dive in. My story of why I chose to say me too and to disclose my, to my family this very painful secret, well, it all starts really by accident. I wasn't brave, I didn't feel empowered, and it certainly wasn't a plan I had. When I was in my mid-twenties, I went through a breakup that shook me to the core. A man I had been with for almost seven years had been having an affair, and that affair resulted in a pregnancy, and that pregnancy resulted in a wedding. To say I was crushed would be an understatement. I was distraught and honestly I was barely functioning. But the silver lining was because I was so distraught I reached out to a friend I knew who had a counselor she had been seeing to help her through her breakup. So I thought maybe this was my way through it. I knew I needed help and I thought this might be my way to finally find some peace. So here is where the accidental part comes in. Turned out this specific counselor, let's call her Linda for the sake of the video. Well, it turns out she was a specialist in child sexual abuse and had dedicated her entire life and career to working with clients who had survived the horrors of CSA. What began for me as a way to find peace over heartbreak became the beginning of a journey to find healing from an even deeper wound a wound that was now so much a part of me, I'm not sure I even knew who I was without it. So after telling Linda what happened to me, and after I had finally gotten to a place in, in therapy and healing through my breakup, by the way, I just want to put it out there, if you're somebody who's ever been cheated on, it's all about them. Don't let it define you or your self-worth, okay? It's really easy to do, but cheaters cheat because of something that they are lacking, not something that you are. Okay, I just had to say that, but I'm gonna get back to my story now. So after I had gotten to a good place emotionally surrounding the breakup, Linda encouraged me to start exploring the different areas of my life that my childhood sexual abuse had affected and she started encouraging me to find ways to heal from that abuse. This is where my bold statement comes in. 
I told her I'd agree, but on one condition. I said, Linda, I'm not telling. I know you probably hear that from a lot of other survivors, but I'm not resting around here. If I say I'm not telling, I'm not telling. And I don't want to discuss it with you. I don't want you to encourage me to disclose. Like, you need to understand that I am taking this to the grave no matter what you say. And Linda, in her oh so professional and oh so smart way, answered, Crystal, I would never encourage you or ask you to do something you know you don't want to do. So that's not a problem. Let's just take that off of the table. So that was it. I was in and for the first time I started to talk to somebody about what he did to me. For the first time I was facing the abuse. So how did I get from that bold statement full of conviction to standing here right now talking to you? Well, it has to do with one word, shame. And here's the thing about shame. It is a sneaky little bastard. Do you want to know what else I was so sure of before I started therapy? Like I knew it. I was so sure I didn't feel shame. I was angry, so I didn't feel shame. He was the asshole, not me. That's the state of mind I was in. I was really fucking angry. And guess what that anger did so well for me over the years? It hid the shame. That's right. It buried it so deep. There was no way that I could see it, feel it, recognize it. I mean, how could I feel shame when I pointed my finger at somebody else? That clearly was a statement in itself. You can't feel shame over someone else's behavior, right? Oh my gosh, was I wrong, wrong. What Linda did that I could not have done on my own was show me where my shame was hiding. She held a mirror up to it, she brought it to my attention, and she honored my experience. Oftentimes, it was just by stopping me like mid-sentence to point out how I had just worded something or described a feeling. Let me give you an example. Okay, so she had asked me, how come you feel comfortable telling your closest friend what happened, but you would never tell your mom who you're just as close, if not closer with? And I was like, oh my God, Linda, I would never tell my mom. That's so embarrassing. She'd say, stop. And she'd cut me off right there. And she would say, do you see what you just said? And then she would make re me repeat it back to her word for word, how I said it. And then she would say, see, there it is. There's the shame. What are you embarrassed of, Crystal? You were not an active participant. You were a child. And at this point, the tears would start flowing and the heavy, ugly cry would soon follow. And as I look back now, I know that that was my body's way of releasing some of that shame that I had carried and held onto so tightly. It was through the kindness and understanding of what it took to help a survivor recognize their shame that Linda got me to the point that I was almost ready to disclose. Not because we had talked about it, not because she had asked me to or encouraged me to, but because as I worked through some of that shame, I began to realize it wasn't mine to carry in the first place. The clencher for me, the one statement that convinced me I had to tell, Linda said, Crystal, I need you to hear one more thing before you leave today. And I want you to go home and to just think about it. She said, shame thrives and prospers in secrecy. If you want to get rid of the shame, you have to start by getting rid of the secret. So that was it. That's what it took. I left therapy that day with that statement in my mind and it repeated itself to me over and over and over again. It took hold of me the same way the darkness had. And now it was in me. And now I knew I had to tell. My mind had been changed and it was time to face this. I would first tell my mom and then my brother. And lastly, the hardest of all, my father, the man I knew it was going to shatter the most. Stay tuned for part two of this video. I will post it next week. Here is where I will tell the story of how it all went down when I told my family. If you are thinking of disclosing your own abuse, this is a must watch. 
Not only will I share my story, but I will share with you the same information that Linda shared with me before I told. This information is what you need to know, and it's so important for you to be prepared for what could happen. You don't want to be walking into this situation blind. You must protect yourself. You honestly have been through enough. And so right now, this is about protecting yourself and being prepared for what could happen. You need to get your bearings around the potential outcomes of your disclosure. You have to run through the what ifs in your mind. It's like putting on a pair of hockey pads before stepping out onto the ice. Sure, you're still gonna get knocked around a bunch, but just imagine what it would be like to be checked into the boards by a 280 pound man on skates without the protection of those hockey pads. So preparing for this moment, that's you putting on your hockey pads. And yes, I totally just had to use a hockey analogy because I am Canadian, eh? But in all seriousness, if you are thinking of sharing your story, I commend you. If you are in the same frame of mind that I was and you are taking this to the grave, I commend you. Neither is an easy option and neither option should be judged. You are actually brave just for existing right now. Listen, I get it. I get the magnitude of what you are dealing with. I understand you ain't just crazy. I know the pain, the confusion, the feelings of defeat and helplessness. You are not alone. What happened to you is wrong. It's horrible. It's real. And it doesn't just go away. You know that saying, time heals all wounds? Nope. Hell no. Not all wounds. That is bullshit. Healing is possible, but it doesn't just happen. It takes work and insight and patience and endurance. So the fact that you are here watching this video shows me how brave you already are. You survived hell on earth. You are already strong enough to get through this. You just might not know it yet. But guess what? I do. So even if you don't believe yet, I will believe enough right now for the both of us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can notify you when part two comes out. Hit that notification button. It's that little bell that pops up next to the subscribe button. You got to hit that to get the notifications. And if you like this video or you found it helpful in any way, share it for me, will you? I need your help in spreading this message. And the only way that happens is if you all share it out there for me. So let's do this together. Let's make a difference in the lives of our fellow survivors. I will leave you with one final takeaway to think about. Shame. It's a sneaky little bastard. It grows and it prospers and it multiplies in secrecy. The darker the secret, the more the shame thrives. And if you are out there listening and you are a survivor, then you know there is no darker place for shame to hide than in the heart of a child sexual abuse survivor who has never disclosed. Until next time, stay strong, trust in the process, and show yourself a little forgiveness today.